In this video, we're going to show how you can add a login function to your uh, UX component uh, so that a mobile application requires authentication before the user can start interacting with it. So you can see here we have a very simple uh, component that has uh, um, been designed with uh, four different buttons here and currently all of the buttons are shown. However, if we go back to design mode, we can see that for this first button we've not put any security on. For the second button we've said that um, only admin uh, users can uh, see this button. For the sales button we've specified that only people who are in sales and admin can see that button and then finally for the marketing button only people in marketing and admin can see the button. So in working preview there's no security groups applied so therefore I can see all of the uh, buttons. We've also put a logout button on the top and a welcome message where we'd like to display the name uh, of the uh, logged in user. So currently this uh, component um, uh, doesn't have any uh, login functionality as associated with it. So now let me also quickly go back to the web project properties and we'll see here in web security that we've uh, turned on security for this project and then we've defined um, three different users a at a.com, m at m dot at a.com and s at a.com uh, each of whom is a member of a different group. So A at A.com is an administrator. Uh, he's uh, in the marketing group and he's in the sales group. So now let's go and build a login component for this um, uh, for our application. So we'll go back to the web control panel and I'll say new UX component and this time I'm going to choose a component uh, from the predefined templates and what I want is a security framework um, login component for a mobile application. So I'm going to go ahead now and then click OK and then close that down. And I can see here that I've got now a sample component and um, if I just quickly go into preview I can see that there's my uh, username and password fields are being prompted for. So let's go back now and take a look at and see what properties were set by this template. So first of all we can see that uh, that the, uh, the component structure is a panel navigator with two panel cards. So the first panel card from there to there is where all of the login functionality has been placed and this has an ID of panel underbar login and then the second panel card is actually where your mobile application will will go. So currently there's just a temporary placeholder here it's called static text but if we look at the comment here for the static text, sorry, let's go here to the, uh, the comment there, we can see that it's telling us that we should really replace the static text with an embedded object, which is in fact our um, application. So we'll go ahead and do that in a, in a while. But let's go back now to properties here. So we can see that for this component, we've turned on integrated login functionality. Then we specified that the username is in this control called username and that the password is in this control called password and that login errors should be displayed uh, using that placeholder. So if we go back to controls we can see that we have a placeholder there which is where all um, login errors um, will be will be defined. So let's go back again to properties and um, then we can see we've defined an inline style for login errors etc. So um, we don't need to actually worry about this property because um, we're going to be redirecting to a different... Um, actually we do need to worry about this and we've currently set this to true which means that after the um, um, component, after the user logs out the UX component, this login component will be completely uh, reloaded. So let's go back now to controls and let's take all of the existing functionality inside this um, a panel card here and delete it and then go ahead now and then go to uh, imb other controls embedded objects and add in the um, UX control the UX component but let's pause now and pick this up in the next video so we're continuing with our um, login component for mobile application and now we'd like to go here to embedded object and then add in our uh, our, actu our actual application component. So this is the actual application. 
So the actual application has been uh, added as a child into our login component. So now let's go to our properties here and let's check this uh, delay render till visible. So basically what this is saying is that when this um, login component is initially run, since the user at that point will not have yet logged in, there's no point in actually running this uh, embedded object um, and uh, so we've said uh, don't run it until the um, this panel gets active. But how will this panel get active? And the answer to that is that there are login events that we're going to be using now. So let's now go to our client side events and if we look at our client side events we can see that in the after login event we're doing a panel set active to panel application and in the after logout event we're doing a panel set active to the login panel so again uh, as you can see here's the uh, login panel and there's the application panel so what's going to happen is when the uh, compo login component is initially displayed uh, the user will see um, the login pane then when they click the login button and if they're successfully authenticated then uh, focus will then move to the application panel and then the actual um, component will be will be loaded but the important thing here is that uh, since the application since this this component is not loaded until uh, the user has been authenticated at that point um, um, uh, Alpha Anywhere will know what uh, user group the authenticated user belongs to and so when this uh, My Mobile application uh, component is actually loaded um, only the buttons that the authenticated user is allowed to see uh, will actually be shown. So let's go ahead now and uh, save this as uh, My um, Mobile App login and then let's go ahead now and then uh, test this so first we're going to save this uh, in its own page so we'll go here and save it and we'll just call this say index.a5w and uh, next what we'll do is um, we'll actually publish it to test it so um, security is not active when you're doing live preview so we actually have to publish the application to see the security at work so we'll go back to our web projects control panel and we'll go ahead now and say publish to local web root but we'll go here and just give it its own folder so we'll go here and we'll say um, mobile security and then um, we'll go now and say we'd like to publish all files in the project uh, since this is the first time we're publishing we'd like to publish all of the security data as well and then after we finish publishing we'd like to load uh, index.a5w so we'll go ahead now and click the uh, publish button so this is going to go ahead now and uh, publish all of our files then launch the browser and uh, you can see now that uh, we're being told that we don't have permission to actually run the login page so let's go back now and fix that so we'll go back to the uh, login page and go here and say that this is always allowed then we'll go to the mobile application and we'll say that uh, requires uh, login and then we can say that uh, these groups uh, can see it and then we'll go to our A5W page and we'll say that this is uh, always allowed. So now that we've made these changes, let's go ahead and republish and test it again. But let's pause now and pick this up in the next video. So we're continuing now with our um, video on adding authentication to a mobile application. We're going to just now go ahead now and republish. We only just need to republish a single file. So let's just go make index.a5w uh, dirty, then go here, publish we can just republish the current file and then launch index.a5w uh, afterwards so we'll go ahead now and hit uh, the publish button and now we can see that um, the component opens up uh, in the browser and uh, let's just um, make the browser window a little bit smaller so that it um, approximates the size of a mobile device and now let's log in as an administrator so I'm going to log in as a at a dot com 
and then go here and type in uh, AALPHA, which was the user ID. Click the login button, and now we can see that um, focus has gone to um, the uh, uh, actual child component, and we can see uh, the component has been loaded. Uh, we see all of our buttons because we logged in as an administrator. However, we don't see the welcome message has not yet been defined and the logout uh, doesn't have any functionality associated with it. So let's go back now to our builders and continue to add that additional functionality. So first let's go to the actual um, uh, uh, child uh, application over here where we have this logout button and we'll just go to the uh, click event there and then go to text mode and just type in dialog dot object dot and then log out and we'll just choose that from the um, uh, uh, auto complete. So now let's uh, save this and uh, publish it and then go back to our uh, and then also let's um, actually let's turn off the server and then turn the server back on again so that the user is no longer uh, logged in and we'll go back to our uh, browser now and uh, we'll rerun the application so there we are back at our login screen so we'll go here and type in say uh, a at a dot com and then a a l p h a hit the login button now we go to um, the um, actual ch uh, child component which is the actual application itself and then we'll go ahead now and press log out and you can see that that returns us now to the uh, parent component to the to the actual login so now let's log in as somebody in the marketing group so m at uh, a dot com and then uh, m alpha and now we can see that we only see the marketing group we can go ahead now and uh, log out and now let's try typing in some incorrect credentials and then log in and you can see that the uh, uh, mer the error message is displayed where our placeholder w was positioned so now we still need to go back and add the functionality that's going to set that uh, message uh, showing the the welcome screen and we'll continue that in the next video so we're continuing our video now on adding uh, authentication to a UX component and as you recall at the end of the last video we had um, um, added the uh, logout functionality but uh, currently the uh, welcome message is not being updated yet so what we'd like to display over here in the welcome message is the name of the uh, uh, logged in user so let's go back now to the builder and see how we can uh, do that so if we go back to the builder we can see that um, for this embedded object which represents the actual application which gets loaded after uh, the user has successfully authenticated you can see that there's a property here called the onload complete JavaScript so this JavaScript is executed after this component is loaded so remember that this uh, embedded component now is not actually loaded until this panel gets focused so there's the delay render till visible and this panel itself doesn't get focused until the user has successfully authenticated so when the user clicks the login button if the login was successful then focus goes to this panel um, that causes this uh, embedded UX component to run and when this component has completed running then this onload complete JavaScript runs. But it's very important to notice the help here that tells you that this JavaScript runs in the context of this embedded component. So dialog.object etc. all refers to the embedded component and not the current component. So if we go to the uh, actual um, uh, embedded component and we look at the uh, static text uh, that is shown in the header we can see that there's a span with an ID of login message so let's just copy that to the clipboard and we'd like to set the inner HTML of this span to the name of the current logged in user so we'll go now we'll go back to the login component and inside the on uh, load complete JavaScript we'll go here and I've actually got the code here I'm just going to go ahead and comment it out and then explain it so what we're doing is we're getting a pointer to that span 
and then we're going to get the name of the logged in user friendly name I will we'll explain what the friendly name means in a uh, in a few moments but um, the actual method itself can be obtained from the autocomplete so if I just type in uh, dialog dot object dot and then um, logged in user friendly name you can see I can get it from the autocomplete so this is giving us the friendly name of the current logged in user and then we're setting the inner HTML of that span to that particular name so um, we could include other text over here like the time that the user logged in or um, any any other information so the friendly name basically uh, could be the same as the logged in name but um, uh, this w the friendly name allows you to for example take um, a cryptic login name like maybe say a at uh, a dot com and replace it with say a real friendly name like say uh, Arthur Anderson or some other name so the friendly name is actually set uh, in the uh, on login server side events so you can see here on the server side events the on login event fires after the user has successfully logged in and one of the things that you can do <coughs> excuse me in this event is set e dot username friendly so if you don't set e dot username friendly then it's just equal to a blank value so right now I'm not going to set it but I'm going to go ahead now and uh, test my application so I'll go there and I'll do uh, sorry I'll um, let me just make this uh, uh, dirty and then save it and then just republish this um, these pages then go back now to test the application so let's go ahead now and then run it and uh, uh, you can see now uh, since we already were logged in this message now has been replaced uh, with a blank because the friendly name has not been set so let's pause now and uh, continue in the next video where we'll actually go ahead and set the friendly name so we're continuing now with our video on adding authentication to a mobile application and we're going to go, go ahead now and set the logged in uh, friendly name so I'm going to just log out here so then let's go back now to our uh, builders and then in the um, on login event let's go now and set the friendly name uh, tempor uh, right now just simply equal to the logged in name so we'll go here and say e dot user name so now in this case the friendly name is being set to exactly the same as the logged in user name but you could easily write code here um, that goes to say some uh, table and looks up a friendly name for some given uh, username but right now we're going to just set the friendly name to be the exactly the same as the username so we'll go ahead now and just do a quick publish and then we'll go back to our browser and do a refresh so let's just reload this page now and now we'll type in say m at a dot com and type in the password and then log in and we can see now that um, the friendly name is displayed over here uh, we've got our logout button that is functional and we're only seeing um, uh, the buttons that uh, this particular user is allowed to see so this uses in the marketing group so they can see the any user button and also the uh, marketing group button so what we've shown in this video is how you can uh, create a uh, login component for a mobile application and um, authenticate users and then also display different controls um, on the uh, mobile application that are conditional based on the current um, role that the logged in user has. Thank you very much for watching.